and we're back on a new project. We got nothing, it's just a whole lot of grass. It is a 16 by 12 cabana that's going to get mounted on top of the patio. That way one couch is at least under the roof with some shade, and then all back there, if anyone wants to soak in some sun, they can do so over there. the boys have brought in the material to put around the bars we just go around and we adjust it now we have a little bit of a level on that laser receiver we try to keep it straight if you tilt it too far back or too far forwards it can skew the reading so making sure that that level is nice and straight um, is necessary to make sure you're getting an accurate measurement now you can see i have to still lift this up so i'm just lifting it up incrementally in small increments until we get a flat line now if you see on the laser screen there we get that green flat line which means that we're perfectly level um, over here i just tried getting you guys an audio clip but clearly our audio didn't work so i apologize on that but if you're taking a look at the receiver, you can see it flat lines. So then I go around. I also check the rest of the bar over here. Again, that flat lines. And I pretty much go around doing that everywhere on every single bar. Again, this flat lines there, as you can see on the receiver. And yeah, once all of our bars are fully set and everything is flat line, we know that we have perfectly level base to work on top of. So here you see the boys are just bringing in some more material. We're spreading it around. And then, yeah, we go ahead, we screed the bars is what it's called in the industry. And we make sure that our base is nice, level, and everything is perfectly smooth. So now that we have material all along the bars, we are going ahead and we are doing what is called screeding. So you can see here, I have my handy dandy eight foot level, and I'm just pulling the material back one stroke at a time, making sure that everything is nice and smooth. And once I've gone ahead and I've done a little section, you can see I put my level back and I'm just looking for any little divots or any little marks. So I'm just spreading some material again, making sure that I go over it, making sure that I fill up those holes. And then I go ahead and pull the level back one last time. And there we go. Everything is nice, perfect and smooth. <laughs> you recording me. Hey. <laughs> um, now just a quick little explanation of what we're doing. So like I said earlier previously, we are going to have a border in between the main paver and the coping. That border goes this way and also goes all the way across that way. Now we want to start with a full piece out in this corner. Because if we were to start over there and bring it out over here, there's a very good chance that we would have, again, a little sliver that we would have to cut all the way through. So if we start with the full piece here, that way we can work our way out that way, we can work our way out that way, and if we do have any cuts, at least the cuts are on the end and not right along, I guess, the main focus point, which is where kind of the patio meets the pool. Um, hope that made sense, but yeah, that's what we got going on right now. Making sure that we start properly so that way we don't have any ugly cuts near the pool.
All right, I want to show you guys a little something, something. I notice I snap a lot, it's funny. Um, so if you can see here, this is our HEPA vacuum. This HEPA vacuum connects to this saw. This is a Husqvarna K770 vac attachment. As you can see, it has this, I don't even know what you'd call that, this device here that kind of helps with the airflow. That way when it's, it sucks all that dust, sends it into our HEPA vacuum. That way we're not putting silica dust in the air. You know, we're taking care of our guys, taking care of people that work in on site, taking care of the houses, the neighbors. Um, if anyone knows anything about silica dust, it's extremely terrible for you. So yeah, we finally got this bad boy in. We've had this on order as well as this on order for quite some time. Obviously due to material shortages and all that BS, it takes a while to get things nowadays, but it's here. So we're gonna be running it for the first time. Super excited to see how it does. Super excited to not have any dust go in the air. That's the biggest pet peeve. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for that. All right, so what I'm doing now is, like I said earlier, we have two spillways on this wall that get spaced out evenly, and we can't just put them in. We have to actually notch a little area because if we were to just put them in normally, the spillway would be halfway in the wall. So we need to measure it, notch it out, cut it out. That way we can put our spillways nice and recessed in there. Coping sits on top of it and it's all hidden. So that's what we're working on now. Check it out. Now that that cut is made, you can see that the spillway fits exactly as it should, at least in and out, but we still have to address the height difference because right now the spillway is sitting on top of that stone. If you were to put your coping down, it would just teeter completely. Now you can see that the spillway is about a half inch thick, at least at lip portion. So what we have to do is we have to actually notch the stone down another half inch. So we just take our measuring tape, we mark down half an inch on both the left and the right side. We then draw a straight line all the way across. And then we take our handy dandy grinder with a long enough blade and we simply just notch that out completely. Again, that allows for the spillway to sit down as it needs to. That way the spillway can be fully recessed, fully hidden and fully invisible without being able to actually notice it's there. Only time you'll ever really notice it's there is when the water is on these bad boys. And trust me, they are a sight to see. So now that that's done, take a look over here. It sits absolutely perfect. Nice, recessed, edges are all flush. Stay just a bit past the wall, that way the water can shear over it and not just dribble down the face. And then, yeah, when we put our coping stones, you will have no clue that this is even here, which looks phenomenal. Um, and like I said, the only time you'll really know it's there is when it's on spitting at water. But aside from that, you'll have no clue. <laughs>
Good morning, YouTube. Back on site. It's Friday. Friday to each and every one of you, although it's not going to be Friday when you're watching this, actually it might be. As you can see behind me, we have some greenery going down, some nice cedars, add a little bit of different color, bring this whole area to life because without it, it's just too much hardscape. Um, so yeah, this morning we're getting these trees fully planted. We have the patio pretty much 95% done. We're just doing some minor touches. We're going to be putting our posts for the cabana. That way it can get framed over the next week or two getting some joint sand in and yeah pretty much wrapping this one up i think we'll be pretty much done everything except for the cabana the line a few small little finishing details uh, but we still have to wait for a couple other things like i said that has to get framed we still have to put a fence in so there's a little bit that needs to go on before we can fully fully finish and bring you guys the finals but if you take a peek it's looking absolutely amazing this wall turned out fire um, let's take a look and see. We have three rows of a marble gray with one row of an accent black just to kind of add that contrast. When it comes to design, that's really how we like to design here at Visionary is, I guess, monochromatic. So light grays, kind of more plain with nice rich contrast added in the right spot. That way it pops and brings things to life. Uh, just a little bit of a design tip. If you're looking to make something a focal point, add a little bit of contrast naturally gravitate towards that little bit of contrast and yeah it'll make whatever you're trying to stand out really pop so that's this morning show you guys some time lapses show you how we get on with our day and y'all stay tuned We're throwing down some nitro joint sand and I apologize if I'm too close to the screen. If I end up breaking your screen because of it, send a warning. I'm just kidding. Um, but check it. Check it, check it, check it. Yeah. 